Today I'm going to give you a bunch of ways to stay motivated while studying for your up and coming exams and hopefully help you stay on track to reaching your goals. I'm really quite invested in this topic as I have a terrible habit of putting things off and even my clearing of the PMPT exam was more than a year later than I would have liked simply because I shied away from the pressure and worry of failing the exam. In reality we should embrace everything as a learning experience regardless of the outcome but that's often easier said than done from my comfy office chair. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. Traditional privileged access management products are ugly, expensive, difficult to deploy, and of course, difficult to use. And that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper Security's next-gen privileged access management solution delivers enterprise-grade password, secrets, and privileged connection management all in one unified platform. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Thousands of organizations rely on Keeper to defend against data breaches, and you can start your 14-day free trial at keeper.io slash TCM, and there is a link in the description below. First, we're going to get an easy one out of the way, but it comes with a lot of pitfalls, and I'm going to talk more about those pitfalls than the tip itself, which is create a schedule. If you can make it so that it falls into your rhythm in that we tend to be motivated and alert at certain times of day and not so much at other times. For me, this is the first few hours in the morning, but for you, it might be mid-morning, early afternoon, or even the midnight hours. Making sure you have the energy and motivation to study and building a schedule around it is going to help you stick to it and also stop you going from doing a single 12-hour stint and then nothing at all for the next two months. It sounds simple, but actually it's quite hard to set something realistic. So what I recommend you do is set your schedule, something that you think right now while you're motivated and ready to go is achievable and then simply delete half of it. The half that remains is your schedule and anything on top of that is an added bonus. But if you ever feel like doing something else, then go and do it and don't beat yourself up about it. Next, we have active learning. And luckily, since the industry is booming, there is no shortage of hands-on labs, exercises, access to practice, practical materials, it's all right there at your fingertips. There are a couple of gotchas though that we need to be aware of. The first is that when you're just starting out, don't think that you have to solve everything yourself. It's okay to use walkthroughs and guides. And the second thing is that we shouldn't throw away hours and hours on a single problem. We need to be efficient in our learning. And if you've not made any progress, then it's time to figure out what we're missing by looking at a guide or walkthrough or simply move on. And for sure, there is a time and a place for hard challenges like this, but it should be a supplement to your learning, not the entire thing. And no one has limitless time to be that inefficient. All right, so next up is a big one. And we all know about goal setting and we know that it's important. And we're often like, I want to achieve this big thing. Awesome. But that's actually really easy to decide. And what we really need to focus on are a few other things. The first being, what do we do in the short to midterm in order to achieve this big goal? And second, what can I do this week or even today to work towards it? When you're deciding these smaller details, make sure that you can check them off a list so that you don't set yourself something like, I need to improve my programming. That's a terrible goal. But being like, I want to complete the Odin project course and I'm going to do a module each week so that I eventually improve my programming is an excellent and achievable set of goals. And each week you can tick off a new module and you're gonna be continued to be motivated motivated because you can see the progress and eventually attain your bigger goal. So with that example, we had some clear actions and each week we're able to tick things off the list. And if you break down your exam or study goals like this, then your chances of success are going to skyrocket. Luckily with exams, there's often training. So you can of course start there by completing the training and then supplementing that with some extra challenges of some kind or review or practice. And honestly, if you stay consistent and don't burn out in the long run, you're always going to be successful. Now, you might be like me and a lifelong lurker on things like Reddit and Discord. And even though I make a conscious effort 
these days, I often find it hard to be chatty outside of groups of close friends. But when I do, I've always found that it helps improve my motivation, even if it's just a small check-in in the morning saying hi or who's ready for coffee. Being immersed with like-minded people who can all share and empathize with what you're going through is a powerful tool to help you stay on track and if you need it, to stay accountable too. I'm sure I read some research somewhere about people going to the gym alone versus with friends and consistency and especially early on when you're settling into a new routine or forming a new habit, your chances of success were way higher if you had a friend to go along with or somebody to keep you accountable. Either way, this is a non-subliminal message for you to join the TCM Discord since it's full of awesome people. My next tip is about taking breaks, but not the regular ones that you should take while studying or working or exercising or during anything really. Breaks should be a regular part of your life. But what I mean is taking breaks in your schedule. For example, I'm currently working on a page a week in my wiki, creating new checklists and researching methodologies, testing things and condensing it all down. But the last week of the month, I don't do it. I skip it. It frees up time for me to relax and enjoy other things in my life. And usually I end up just doing nothing at all. But by the time the next week rolls around, I'm excited to get back to it. And this is a great alternative to working flat out and burning out. Taking regular breaks is definitely key for your long-term motivation. Speaking of my wiki project, making your notes a source of motivation by cultivating them and watching them grow into an awesome and usable thing that should essentially be your partner in crime or partner in not crime given our field of work. But again, if you just add one page of quality notes per week and come back to those notes and make use of them, you're going to realize how much you've covered in a short period of time that itself, once again, can be really motivating and help you keep up the pace. One last thing before we wrap up, and that is that time is precious. Because it's so precious, we should learn to say no to more things. If it's not something that you're really excited about, simply say no, but don't then waste that precious time that you've just bought or saved yourself. Commit to five solid minutes of something that aligns with your goals, and more often than not, the momentum that you've just picked up is going to keep carrying you. You'll be in for a great study session and once again making leaps and bounds towards your long-term goals. And that's it for this video. I hope it helps you stay on track with your goals and remember there are always ups and downs but if you can do a little bit each day you're going to achieve the things that you set out to do and probably even more. Catch you next time.